Welcome to day three of Taste and See, of bite-sized breakthroughs for busy women. This is just what will happen every week. We will gather together once a week for a transformational moment. You can engage at your convenience. I encourage you to watch the transformational moments as they come. And if you join and we have 50 transformational moments already there, go back to the beginning and just carry yourself through, or you can jump around, but make sure you start where it says start here to get our foundation. But again, this is your opportunity just to taste and see what bite-sized breakthroughs for busy women is going to be like. So let's dive into our moments for today. Okay, so I want you to understand this. Your soul has a capacity. Mm -hmm. Your soul has a capacity. Now, many of us grew up with old school parents who would bootleg some things. You know what I'm talking about? When the TV was staticky, they would do what? Hit the TV or they would put foil on the antenna. Sometimes when I think about this, I realize my daughters don't really even know what an antenna is. TVs don't even have antennas now, so they don't even, it's so crazy to me. Anyway, so they would put foil on the antenna. They would do something to bootleg the TV to make the static go away. That's a message in and of itself, the fact that they would bootleg it to get rid of the static. Some of us are bootlegging our life to get rid of the static. <laughs> Another way they would bootleg is if a table or a chair was wobbly, what would they do? They would foil a, a, a fold up a piece of foil or... A paper towel and put it under the wobbly leg so the table or chair wouldn't wobble anymore. They would be bootlegging it so that it would have some stability. Baby, that's another message. They would bootleg it so it would have some stability. But sis, many of us are bootlegging. We are bootlegging our own wellness. We are bootlegging our own lives. Listen, here at Bite Size Breakthroughs for Busy Women, we are cutting to the chase to give you the ahas that you need to transform your life. So I want you to write that down already. I'm going to stop bootlegging my life. I'm stop bootlegging my wellness. Your soul has a capacity. There is only so much that you can carry. Listen, if you go get on an elevator, can I tell y'all an elevator story that really has nothing to do with nothing? I just want to tell you the story. My husband and I got married 23 years ago and we went to Cancun for our anniversary. We are in Cancun, not for our anniversary, for our honeymoon. We're in Cancun. Y'all, we get on an elevator. The elevator stops. The lights go out. I guess the power went out. Y'all, I was in the corner of the elevator, balled up on the floor. It's so embarrassing. The lights come on and this little five-year-old was looking at me like, what's wrong with her? I was so scared. But I love thinking, no, I don't. I don't love thinking about that. I always think about that when I talk about the fact that your soul has a capacity. There's only so much that you can carry because if you go check out any elevator, you can look somewhere on the elevator and it is going to say this elevator can only hold so much weight. Now you could try it if you want to, but then you're going to be like me in the corner, balled up because the elevator is going to come crashing down. You cannot bootleg your capacity. So what do you need to do? Did you know that there's a such thing as compassion fatigue? I'm actually going to look up the actual definition. This is what often happens to me when I'm working with somebody. I know the definition of something, but I like to give you the official definition so that we can all be on the same page. What is the best definition of compassion fatigue? The physical, emotional, and psychological impact of helping others often through experiences of stress or trauma. But y'all, that compassion fatigue can happen when you are, listen to this, when you are taking in all of the weight and all the concerns and all the drama of everybody, social media really can produce compassion fatigue. And, and it's not that you don't care. I'm helping somebody, baby, write this down. I am helping somebody. It's not that you don't care, but your soul can only handle so much. And so you're listening, you're seeing that this is going on and this is going on and this person is having this. And th so it's not just your life. 
is not just your close family's life. It's not just your really good friend's life. It is your third grade teacher's cousin that you just found out something about. And because you're not, not a psychopath, you care. So you take that piece of care. And then your uncle's ex-girlfriend's niece had a bad accident. So now you're taking that on y'all. You only can imagine how your soul gets worn out. Your soul has a capacity. Your soul has a capacity. You very well may be, and listen, don't let you be a, a person who is super sensitive. Did y'all see how I skipped over? <laughs> Did y'all see how I skipped over that? Because I always pronounce the word wrong empath and i'm a whole therapist empath don't let you be an empath or yeah an empath don't let you be someone who's super sensitive to what people experience your soul sis has a capacity there's only so much that you can carry so again over here on bite-sized breakthroughs for busy women we are cutting to the chase and giving you ahas for you to journal and take away and as i've told you i am combining my spiritual sensitivity with my clinical expertise with my coaching strategies to help you transform your life one aha at a time and so today i want to tap into that spiritual sensitivity i want to teach you that you have to learn to consecrate your heart. You have to be careful with how much you take on. You cannot be the Shiro for every issue that shows up on your timeline, for every issue that shows up in the news, for every issue that shows up in your friend group. You cannot be the Shiro for all of that. You need to figure out where you are going to put your energy, where you're going to put your focus and go hard with that. But honey, you can't go hard with 10 different things. Okay. So I want you to learn how to consecrate your heart. So what can that look like? Well, it doesn't mean that you turn a blind eye. You can learn how to say a breath prayer. That's one of the things I really try to help people do a breath prayer, just a one line prayer. Instead of saying, I'm going to pray about it and never pray about it. Father, keep her and cover her and be everything that she needs you to be. Father, intervene in that situation in a supernatural way so that they can know that you are God. Father, you see the cries of your people. Will you do exactly what they need? A breath prayer. So now you know you, because listen, there is power in prayer. You are amazing, but you're not more powerful than God. And so you can do a breath prayer. Learn to consecrate your heart. But then I also want you to learn how to cast your own cares because honey, while we are concerned about what everybody else got going on, baby, we got some things going on too. So I want you to learn how to cast your cares. And I am such a practical girl and I am a realist. So sometimes I need people to break things down to me all the way down, all the way down to the ground all the way down. How am I going to talk about casting your cares? I'm about to give you a scripture and I'm talking about break it all the way down. I mean, hey, I'm well-rounded. I want you to learn how to cast your cares. Psalm 55, 22 says this, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. Baby, I want to stop right there. <laughs> In all seriousness, I want to stop right there. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. First Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your care, cast all your care on him for he cares for you. Let's look that one up real quick because I think it's something significant to first Peter chapter five, verse seven. Let's look that up together. Are you looking it up? First Peter chapter five, verse seven. It's something significant about that that I think. I want to point out, hold on, because you know different versions say different things. And I want to see if what I thought about this is true. Yes. So different versions, some versions say cast all your anxiety. Some versions say cast all your worries. Some versions say cast pretty much anxiety or worry. But this is what stands out. When it says cast all your care, to him, it actually says care. 
instead of the S. A couple of them have an S, but most of the time it says cast all your care upon him. Why is that significant to me? Because I see it as encompassing your heart. Cast all your care. All the thing that's in your heart, cast it on him. So like I said, I'm a practical girl. So I like to break down what it means to cast your care. So let's look at this. This is how I break down casting or cast your care. Number one, the letter C, call and cry out. Girl, write this down. This is what you need to be journaling. Call and cry out. Call out to God and cry out to him. Literally, if you're saying, Robin, how do I cast my care on him? How do I cast my anxieties on him? How do I cast my worry? Call and cry out. Lay before the Father and just get it all out. Don't stuff it. Don't hide it. One of the things I've been spending a lot of time with some of my very close friends lately is telling them, take all of that stuff to God, even the stuff that you feel shame about struggling with. Take that to him too. There's a song that I would love to share with those of you who are in the community. So don't let me forget to post this particular song. It'll really encourage you. The song is, um, it says, don't give up on me now. And it's a prayer to God. God, I know that I am not doing everything right, but don't give up on me now. So take all of that. Don't let shame keep you from bringing it to God. Cast, call and cry out. Then the A, align and adjust. Now, listen, if we're going to call out to him, we're going to have to obey him. So we need to align our lives and ourselves and adjust to what he is saying, what his will is, what area in your life is out of alignment. Y'all know God don't bless mess. What area in your life is out of alignment? So align and adjust. Seek and surrender. Stay in a perpetual place where you are seeking him so that you, because remember, you've called and cried out. You've aligned and adjusted. Now you are seeking him. Seek his will. Seek his will. He will answer. He's not playing hide and go seek. Seek and surrender. God, whatever your will is, I am going to move to the T, trust and give thanks. I'm going to trust you, God. There, One of my favorite scriptures right now is that my heart is confident in him. My heart has confidence in him. It says, my heart has confidence in him. No wonder I give him praise. That's what the scripture says. So trust, trust, trust him. As hard as it is, sis, I know it can be hard. But trust, and not just trust, trust and then give Thanks in advance before you see the outcome, before you see him move. He's going to move, but trust him and then give him thanks. So remember, your soul has a capacity. You're going to have to consecrate your heart. You can't take it all on. You will have compassion fatigue. And then talking about taking it all on, even your stuff, sis, you got to cast. You have to cast your care on him because he cares for you. How do you cast? You call and cry out. You align and adjust. You seek and surrender. You trust and give thanks. That's it for today's Taste and See. I would love for you to be a member of Bite Size Breakthroughs for Busy Women, where every week you will get a transformational moment just like this for you to experience transformation in your life one aha at a time. I'll see you in the next Taste and See.